Hey, what's up guys? Now let me just apologize for my voice because I'm still getting over a cold, but I think I'll manage to get through the video. What is a re-amp box and why would you need one anyway? You see, when recording guitars or bass, it's a common thing to split the signal in two and record a dry signal from the instrument and also the affected signal from the instrument. So we can use this dry signal later on in addition to the affected signal or maybe as a backup if we want to change the sound. And if you want to send this dry signal through a physical gear again, simply connecting the output of an interface to the input of an amplifier might not work out that well. The main problem is usually noise and hum that's caused by a ground loop in the system. Now, we won't get into much detail here, but in short, a ground loop occurs when there are multiple paths to ground between electrical equipment. Another problem could be the output impedance of your sound card because that's much lower than that of a typical guitar or bass. And this can negatively affect some pedals that expect a higher output impedance. A rim box can solve ground loop problems with the use of a transformer that provides isolation between equipment. And we can also add a component or two to make the impedance adjustable and solve that problem as well. Plus, it will convert a balanced signal to an unbalanced signal. These boxes are commercially available from about $60 to over $200. Now, the more expensive ones have more features and claim better sonic transparency, although we can actually achieve a flat frequency response with a DIY box that we can build for about $20. What you'll need is a audio line transformer, a metal box enclosure, XLR and jack connectors, 100 kilo ohm logarithmic potentiometer, single pole switch, a knob and one 10 kilo ohm resistor. Oh, and some wire as well. If you want to make it as small as possible, 89 mm long, 35 mm wide and 30 mm high should be just enough. First, let's mark the holes and drill them out. Now, if you'd like to paint the box as well, the cost will go up a bit because painting aluminum isn't easy. And even if you decide to do this, the results might not always be what you expect. You'll need a self etching primer, a spray paint and a sandpaper or a sponge. Roughen the surfaces using sandpaper and clean the box using isopropyl alcohol. Then apply two thin coats of primer and two coats of paint and let it cure for at least 24 hours. Ok, let's put all the parts in the box and wire it up. If you have a small box, you'll have to bend the pins on the XLR connector. And the extra ground pin can also be removed. If your potentiometer has a little metal tap on the side, clip it away. Bend the pins on the jack connector as well and insert it in the box. Now solder two wires to the middle and the right pin of the potentiometer, then glue the transformer to the back. Connect the middle pin wire to the tip pin of the jack connector. Then twist the 10 kilo ohm resistor around two outer pins of the secondary side of the transformer. Mm -hmm. 
Connect the sleeve pin of the jack connector to one side of the resistor and the other wire from the potentiometer to the other side of the resistor. Solder all connections. Pin 1 on an XLR connector is normally shield or ground and we'll connect this through a switch to the sleeve pin on the jack so we can connect or disconnect the ground at any time. And we just have to connect pins 2 and 3 on the XLR connector to the transformer. If your XLR connector has an eject pin, insert it now and install a knob on the potentiometer. We've finally done it, let's now see if it works. Yeah, everything works fine, so let's see if the box actually has a flat frequency response. If we push 20 Hz signals through with a bit more volume, we get this ugly looking waveform, but that's at about 3 volts peak to peak and disappears quickly with higher frequencies. At 1 kHz, we can go pretty crazy with voltage and it won't distort at all. I did a bit more detailed analysis of the frequency response and distortion characteristics of this box and as you can see it's pretty flat from about 10 Hz to 50 kHz. Let's see the distortion. At 1 kHz we got really undetectable distortion figures and if we go down to 20 Hz we can see that there's about 0.2% total harmonic distortion which is really undetectable in these sort of situations. Now let's check out the noise when reamping with and without the reamp box. So that's it, if you follow along it should be pretty easy for you to build one yourself. As you can see you don't need an expensive rim box, something like this works as well. A bit of a warning on the paint though. As I said, painting aluminium isn't easy, so even if you do all the steps correctly, the paint might not work out that well. You can see this already has some problems with the color. You can also buy a painted box so you don't have to deal with these issues. All of the stuff you need to build this thing is in the description, so if you think you might want one, get building. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel, I've got more awesome things coming up. Thank you for watching and stay creative!